Woo. Oh, these are gonna be heavy. Oh boy. About $10,000 worth of battery components for our van and all I have eyes for is this hardwood pallet. <laughs> The question is, do I have time to make something out of this before we leave in the van in seven weeks? You know what? I think we can turn this into a pretty sweet piece of furniture for the van. Let's take this thing apart. So after a surprisingly meditative half hour, I got all the nails out of the slats. Let's play in these bad boys. This might be the coolest pallet wood I have ever come across. A lot of it has this really cool pink hue. I have no idea what species of wood this is. So if you know, let me know in the description. I'm 90% sure it's hardwood just because the grain is really tight and it's not very splintery. It's a lot heavier than a softwood pallet. I think this is gonna make a pretty sweet desk. To make my desk, I wanna cut these slats into strips. Now, finding a flat edge on pallet wood is next to impossible, so I need to create a flat edge that I can reference. Now, I don't have a jointer, but I do have this jointing jig that I made for my table saw. This is super easy. All you need is a piece of scrap plywood, a little bit longer than your fence and three or four inches wide. You make a cut the width of the saw blade kerf, but stop before you get all the way through, and then flip that board around that gives you a surface that you can press your board against and use the saw blade like the blades on a jointer. It's kind of hard to explain. I hope that makes more sense visually than it does coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I followed a tutorial to make this. I'll link it in the description. So even though it might look like the next day, it's actually been about two and a half weeks since I last touched this project. And you might be thinking, hmm, that's weird considering you have to move into the van in less than a month. But Eden and I had to take a bit of a break from building so we could get married. And then once the wedding festivities were over, we really started feeling the crunch time on the build. So we switched gears to some of the more basic infrastructure projects. We put down our luxury vinyl plank flooring. I got back to work building out the inside of the cabinets. All right, moment of truth. Will four drawer slides align? Oh boy. Oh, they're all in. Wow. There we go. Wow. We got ourselves a pantry. Wow. And then with only three weeks to go until move-in, we decided to take another break from building and go to the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp. Eden finished upholstering our cushions the day before we headed down to upstate New York. So we were actually able to sleep in the van with Abby and Penny. And it was a great test ride of what living in the van will be like, especially since we still have the opportunity to make a lot of changes. It was a bit stressful considering how much we have left to do, but I don't regret going. It was so much fun hanging out with the maker community, cooking out of the van, actually living inside of it for the first time and seeing, oh, we wanna add a flip down water bowl holder or an awning is really important when it rains for an entire day. It's also been so busy with the van build and the wedding planning that it was nice to have a little vacation right before crunch time. And I think it re-energized us for the next three weeks, which are gonna be wild. <laughs> so enough talking, let's cut these pieces into strips. All 
right, so here is my haul. We lost a few pieces that were splintered or just too far gone to salvage, but I think this should be enough to make a comfortable size desk. Let's stack them up and see. All right, so that should give us a desk that is 19 and a half inches wide. And I don't know, to me, that feels plenty wide, especially for living in a van. So I might take away some of the less good pieces like this short splintery one and just make this as nice as possible. This one as well, not very good. I mean, that's still comfortably wide. Like I could have my laptop in there. So as much as I'd love to glue all these slats together, throw them on the router sled and flatten the desk in one fell swoop, the table that I use with my router sled is currently a little cluttered with all the plywood for our van cabinets. It's also just being kind of like a general purpose workbench. I could clear it off, but you know, there's nothing wrong with a little basic tools project. So we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. I'm going to split the slats into two separate glue ups that can both fit through my planer. That way we can flatten them separately and then glue the two halves together and do the final finishing once this is one piece. Let's do it. These glued up panels are looking great. I love the variation of color. I spent a lot of time arranging the slats so I have a nice striping effect. And now I need to plane these down smooth and to the same thickness. I have to be careful though, because these are already pretty thin. To get enough width to build a comfortable desktop, I had to rip each slat down to only 7 8 inch wide. And I don't wanna go too much thinner than that for the tabletop. We are in a van, so limiting weight is a good thing, but if this is too thin, it won't feel very nice and you start to worry about strength. So my goal is to do just a few very light passes through the planer. It's easy to get carried away once your pieces start feeling smooth and close to finished, but we gotta keep that under control. Woo, check these out. Oh, this is gonna make such a beautiful desk. Now that I have my two halves plain to the same thickness, I want to glue them together. But as you can see, the mating edges don't line up in a straight line. There's a bit of rock to it, so I'm not gonna get a clean glue up if I just send it as is. Now, the best thing to do would be sending each mating face through a jointer, but as I mentioned earlier, I don't have one. I could use my jointing jig for the table saw, but I wanna be a little more precise here. So I'm gonna step outside of the beginner tools universe and use my track saw to joint these faces. Track saws aren't cheap, especially this Festool one, but I stand by the fact that they are such a game changer of a tool. They allow you to do jointing cuts like this, cut straight things at angles, cut down big pieces of plywood, way safer than on a little job site table saw. Might not be in a beginner's budget, but definitely would recommend getting one of these at some point in the beginning of your woodworking journey. I'll have a link for this one in the description, as well as links for all the other tools I used in this project. So these are the two edges that I ran through the track saw and check it out. Boom, perfect mating face, ready for glue up. So this is where the desk is gonna go. I have one of these Lagoon table mounts so it can swivel out of the way. And as you can see, it's a little too big at the moment. We're gonna have the 3D printer right here. Also, can we just take a second and admire Eden's beautiful upholstered cushions? This is so comfy. I'm so stoked to like work here. All right, anyways. <laughs> So this is definitely too long. Um, I think at maximum, it should be the length of the cushion. I can cut it down and then retest it. So I might err on the side of bigger. I think this bench is like 31 inches wide. All right, here is the trimmed desk. Oh, this is sweet. The 
3D printer cabinet will be right here. I'm essentially gonna have a wall next to my head, so it's not gonna hit that. And let's say I wanna get out. I can rotate this out, get out nice and easy. That goes in and we still have the whole alleyway that we can walk. We bring it out, rotate around. Easy to come in. Boom. All right, let's start finishing. So before I finish sanding, there's a couple big knot holes that I wanna fill with clear epoxy resin. For this, I'm using Total Boat High Performance Epoxy Resin. This stuff is super easy to use, especially with the calibrated pumps. It dries clear and it cures relatively fast, so it is perfect for filling small knot holes like these, especially if you only need a little bit of epoxy. Total Boat is also the sponsor for this video, so check out the link in the description for a discount. So I got this sanded up to 220 grit, and before I add finish, there is one more detail that I wanna add. This is something that I've never tried before, and if I can pull it off, this is gonna look so cool. So I'm gonna line my track saw along the edge, but set it out by about an eighth of an inch. Then I'm gonna take my track saw and set it to 45 degrees so I can make an undercut. I've never done an undercut edge before, but they look so cool, so I hope this works. Woo, that looks awesome. Proper preparation makes perfect, or however the saying goes. Now I just gotta do it three more times. <laughs> I'm gonna finish the desk with Total Boat Halcyon Clear. This is our go-to clear varnish for the van build because it is marine grade, super rugged, and easy to apply. One thing I love about Halcyon is it's low VOC. So on a cold fall day like today, I can apply it inside without getting sick from fumes. I'm going to do a few buildup coats of gloss followed by a final one or two coats of satin. I just love a satin finish. It is going to look so good. Let's finish this thing. Now you might be thinking that the title of this video is clickbait. Am I seriously saying that this simple table is my dream desk? This simple table made from a pallet with no LEDs, no hidden outlets, it's just strips of wood glued together. This is my dream desk. But to me, this is not just a desk. As we're about to embark on this van journey and change our entire lives, this is a reminder of what allowed me to turn YouTube into a full-time career. One of my first videos that blew up and really legitimized this channel was turning a free pallet into a $550 desk, a very similar design as this one, and I never made one of those desks for myself. This is a reminder of how far I've come, how success can really come from the most unexpected places. But perhaps more importantly, ever since I started making YouTube videos, the setting of where I worked was so important. You know, I've set up a pretty nice home studio, but the longer I work in there, the more I feel myself drawn to go edit in a local cafe. And this desk, in our van that we'll be using to travel around North America will truly allow me to work from anywhere. In case you're wondering, it's currently October 21st. We're moving out of our apartment in 10 days. And as I'm sitting here in my puffy jacket and hat, looking out on a gloomy gray Ontario fall day, I am so excited to edit a video on this thing sitting on the beaches of California. <laughs> That's the motivation right now, baby. If you would like to see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can gain exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page and Discord community by supporting this channel on Patreon. I would like to give a special thank you to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt.
Thanks, Mom. I love you. The next time you see me, I'll be living in here. <laughs> Pretty crazy.